Welcome to WTVC 17 here in Buenos Aires in Argentina, where I'm very pleased to be in the studio today by Tanmay Bakshi, who describes himself as an algorithmist. Is that right? Yes, yes. Glad to be here. Thank you. Well, thanks so much for being with us in the studio, Tanmay. Of course. So, now, I'd like to just basically just ask you really what, what you're doing here. Obviously, the majority of people here are uh, as old as the hills, a bit like me. Uh, so I just wanted to find out what's, what's brought you here to Buenos Aires. Sure. So, I mean, as you know, I'm here for this great conference, ITUWTDC. Uh, originally, uh, actually, the, the, the way I actually got here uh, was one of the organizers, Jaroslav, uh, and I'd like to say a big thank you to him for inviting me. Uh, he saw my TEDx Cincinnati talk uh, a few, uh, few, few months ago that I had a few months ago. Uh, so it was really interesting. He, uh, he contacted me on LinkedIn, and I was really fascinated by this amazing conference. Uh, and I was really, really interested in how I can you know, spread my message about art artificial intelligence and the technologies that I'm working with uh, so I immediately said yes uh, and I've been uh, you know working uh, working ever since to uh, be in Buenos Aires and I'm glad to be here now Okay, well, let's talk a little bit about your message. What is, what is your message about the technology and AI? Sure, definitely. Now, my message is mainly about artificial intelligence and how it's not only the future of technology, but of the digital economy itself. Uh, and so I really like to emphasize how artificial intelligence can impact our everyday lives and, in fact, is already impacting our everyday lives. If you think about it, even right now, uh, if you were to e even record a video with, like, the iPhone 8 or 10 or really whatever, uh, if you were to use a personal assistant, if you were to drive in a smart car, uh, you're using artificial intelligence on almost a daily basis every single part of uh, every single part of your life is powered by AI and so how can we make it so that more people adopt to these technologies uh, and be more open to it because I know there are lots of concerns regarding AI the data it collects what it's doing uh, but really my message is to adopt to this technology and it can really bring us a lot of benefit to our society today and really help augment uh, these new organizations within the digital economy now, apart from obviously your, your great knowledge about this industry, uh, you actually uh, developed a, an app. Uh, so I actually released my very first app when I was nine years old uh, in 2013 called T-Tables, helps you learn your multiplication tables. Uh, after that, I immediately started giving lots of different STEM talks because, of course, at the time, I was really, really interested in technology in general uh, on how science, technology, engineering, and math can actually come together to create such a powerful combination. So I you know, gave lots of STEM talks at schools, uh, et cetera. And then from there, though, uh, I mean, sort of, I, I of course, sort of continue to work on iOS apps. I, you know, improved T-tables. I created um, an application to test if you're colorblind. I created an application uh, that helps you uh, to actually lock uh, inf important information, encrypt important information behind your fingerprint with Touch ID. But the thing is, uh, and I even created a, uh, a goal setting app for the youth called I Can We Can. But after that, I sort of started to lose a little bit of my interest, or so you could say passion in technology. And the reason was because it was so rigid. Technology as, uh, technology as a subject itself is something where the moment you code something in, you've got to start working on a new version. It immediately starts becoming obsolete. And I wanted to find a way to make technology new, make technology uh, less literal. Uh, and so I started looking for new challenges. And luckily, when I was 11 years old, I actually stumbled upon artificial intelligence. And the way I did that was, why, was by actually stumbling uh, upon a documentary on IBM Watson uh, on YouTube, which was really interesting. It immediately fascinated me as to how a computer can play the Jeopardy game show. And so from there, I was immediately hooked onto the concept of artificial intelligence, immediately started working with Watson, created my first AI project, Ask Tanmay, and from there, I've been really, really passionate about AI and what it can do for our lives. Now, there are those who are quite skeptical about AI. What would you say to them? Sure. Now, there are a few different ways uh, we could talk about this question. Uh, we could say that, you know, people are afraid it's going to replace them in their jobs. Uh, there are some people that say, you know, artificial intelligence is bad for humanity. It's going to take over humans. Uh, it's going to, you know, kill us all or something of that. So some sort of, you know, uh, end of the world scenario with AI. Uh, but what I'd say is, you know, let's, let's actually answer both of those questions. Number one, replacing humans. Uh, now, in terms of replacing humans, I'd say that artificial intelligence was not made to replace humans and is continuing to be developed for the sole purpose of really augmenting what we can do and amplifying our capabilities. And for example, if you were to take a look into what AI is doing today, uh, like for example, in cancer treatment and diagnosis, uh, we're not replacing the cancer specialists themselves. We're not replacing the oncologists. We're not replacing the doctors, the specialists. What we're doing is we're giving them this AI tool that allows them to diagnose faster and allows them to treat in a much more efficient and much more personalized way. Because the thing is, a human cannot memorize every 
every single piece of literature on, say, cancer that comes out every day or has come out in the past, say, you know, 10, 20, 30 years. That's impossible. But AI can memorize that, and AI can actually understand that literature, can actually go into it and try and find meaning. Uh, and plus, what AI can also do is say we've got, you know, thousands upon thousands of different drugs. It can provide personalized medicine to individual patients. So instead of saying, you know, one drug fits all, uh, we can do, like, for example, personalized medicine. In fact, in one instance, uh, specialists fed in Parkinson's patients patient's information into Watson, and Watson gave out 16 medicines that were actually never linked to Parkinson's before in the first place. And then, of course, remember, not replacing, the specialists come in, they actually take a look at those 16 medicines, and they say, okay, which ones will help out this patient? But apart from that, what about these sort of end of the world scenarios? Uh, some people think that, you know, AI, we'd program it to do one thing, we'd program it to, you know, help us drive in a smart car, and the next thing you know, it's taking over humans, it's taking over humanity. Uh, but I'd say, again, impossible. Reason is, AI cannot change its objective function, which is the function that tells AI you're doing good or you're doing bad. It's impossible for AI to make a decision on what it wants to do. The end goal for AI is always the same. And while a human could make the end goal of AI something negative, that's already being done with technology and we're combating against it. But the positives that AI brings to us are so, so great. And the fact that it cannot change its own intent on what it wants to do makes me believe that it's completely safe for really everyone to incorporate in their workflow and in their life. Now, you're ne not necessarily ahead of your time. You're certainly ahead of a lot of your peers. I wanted to ask you, what uh, message do you have for your peers when it comes to use and access of technology? Sure, definitely. Uh, now, I mean, of course, everyone in the world is using technology. Everyone in the world is quite literally every moment of their lives using technology. Even as you're watching this video, you're using technology to watch this video, whether it be your homework, you know, even when you're learning something that's not related to technology at all, you're using technology to learn about it. But really what I believe is that in the future, and I completely agree with Mark Anderson's quote here, uh, in the future there are only going to be two types of jobs in the first place. Those in which people tell computers what to do, and those in which people are told what to do by computers. <laughs> and so I really believe uh, that everyone nowadays needs to be on the other end of the spectrum. They need to be telling computers computers what to do, and in order to be there, you need to future-proof yourself by actually learning how to speak the language of this technology, how to program. And from there, not just program, get ready for the future and get ready for what's already you know, around you, artificial intelligence, which I believe is definitely sort of the dominant part of technology itself uh, and is only going to be growing exponentially. So again, uh, really trying to learn more about this technology, learn how you can speak its language, learn uh, how exactly you can actually get into this technology and tell it what to to do instead of the other way around. Uh, in fact, in order to do this, uh, around six years ago, I actually started my YouTube channel, Tan May Teaches, uh, which is, again, one of the things that I did after I created my first application. Uh, but so with this channel, I really love to share my knowledge about lots of different topics, including computing, programming, algorithms, uh, math, science, watts, and all this sort of stuff. Uh, and so on, on that YouTube channel, once really whenever I'd release a video that day, I'd be getting tens of messages on LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube, email, everywhere, uh, saying, how can I code this in? I'm experiencing this error with my program. And so I realized there's a huge knowledge gap in terms of technology and the resources to actually learn about this technology, which is why I actually created a goal, uh, which is that I definitely want to reach out to at least 100,000 aspiring beginners to help them really learn and innovate along their journey of coding, uh, and I believe, and of course, I'm really glad to say that I'm already around 5,000 people there, and I'm working towards it through lots of different media, like, of course, as I mentioned, my YouTube channel, uh, the book that I authored, uh, I w and I started authoring, the, the day Swift came out, uh, it's called Hello Swift, iOS app programming for kids and other beginners, uh, available for pre-order uh, online, uh, and of course, many, many other media, like the keynotes and interviews that I'm doing right now as well. That's great. Well, let's hope that we get some of that audience uh, watching this video, which, uh, which would be great. It would certainly push up our, our, our numbers on our <laughs> YouTube channel. But I just wanted to ask you, from your perspective, what do you think will be the greatest benefit that uh, artificial intelligence will bring? Sure. Now, this is actually a very, very broad question. And so it's hard to answer in specific what the benefit is, because the thing is, AI impacts numerous different fields. Practically, wherever you're using technology, that will be touched by AI in at least some way. 
Uh, and so what I'd say is in general, the benefit that AI brings is decision making and natural intelligence to computers. Uh, and like you might hear, you know, people say, you know, your computer has just this much processing power and it's so huge, uh, whereas your brain fits within a shoebox and it has this much processing power, which I believe is completely unfair in terms of a comparison. Because the way your brain is structured and the way a computer is structured is entirely different. The computer has no way of knowing it even exists. It's just a bunch of wires connected in a certain way to do specific math operations, which look as if it's doing something to us. Uh, but what I believe is that artificial intelligence sort of bridges that gap. It allows computers to make decisions as if they were intelligent and allows them to learn from previous data and to make decisions and to actually predict future data points. Uh, and like, for example, with personalized medicine, we're not like, you know, humans taking thousands of drugs and individually testing, okay, will this one help out a Parkinson's patient? Will this one? AI is able to look at them and instantly and quite rapidly take a look at all the data points and is able to bridge that gap and take what computers are good at, which is massive data crunching and processing, and take what humans are good at, intelligence, and merge them together into this really fine piece, which has a lot of advantages, but a few drawbacks as well. Like, for example, it's, it's nowhere near nor natural intelligence. You cannot get to that with computers. However, what it does allow the computers to do is have enough reasoning to help us out so nicely that I'm sure within the next few years, practically everything we do will be made much more efficient with AI. In fact, like right now, if I want to text message someone back uh, and I'm on the other side of the room, I don't need to get over there, take out my phone, start replying to that person. All I do is I say, you know, hey Siri, reply to this person and say this, this, and this, and it sends it for me. Everything is being done so much more efficiently already within the next few years that'll be really amplified and really allow us to do practically everything we're already doing in a much more efficient and much better manner. Well, you're certainly displaying a lot of natural intelligence. <laughs> I wanted to ask you just in, from finally <laughs> looking you. at the future, how, what do you, what, how do you see the future looking in 10 years time, let's say, for artificial intelligence? Sure, now artificial intelligence, uh, if you were to think about it, the next level of technology uh, grows at an extremely, extremely rapid pace. And it's, a, it's, it's not like a, uh, an estimate, uh, you cannot put an estimate on that growth. It's something that's not predictable. Uh, but what I can say is that within the next 10 years, as I mentioned, we're already being impacted by AI and technology. Imagine in the next 10 years, when you get into your car, you won't need to drive that car you will tell it where to go. And th what that means is I'm not saying that you know, we're, we're just going to have self-driving cars. I'm saying that these mundane activities that humans have to complete right now, uh, like for example, in factories, in you know, driving your car, whatever it may be, these mundane activities are being taken away by AI. AI is doing that for us. And we humans can concentrate on and focus on innovating in other areas which require it really the most, I believe. Uh, like for example, AI, working towards you know, making it even better, even smarter. Uh, and so AI AI will take away uh, these sorts of you know, really repetitive, uh, small tasks that humans need to do that are not important to us and allow us to focus on other areas where that focus is required the most. Uh, and that's what I see in 10 years' time. Uh, and I can, again, definitely see our lives being so, so much better due to the fact that AI uh, is here. Again, as I mentioned, we're not just allowing people's uh, you know, lives to be saved through cancer treatment. Uh, we're doing so, so much more than that. In fact, one example of that is is actually a project of mine called The Cognitive Story. Uh, and with The Cognitive Story, uh, we're trying to give Boo, a quadriplegic girl who lives just north of Toronto, the ability to communicate through artificial intelligence. That's right, she actually cannot communicate naturally at all, and only those most familiar with her condition, like her mom, can understand her very broad intent when she tries to convey something through very, very simple actions. And so through artificial intelligence, I'm actually trying to use deep learning algorithms and understand her electroencephalogram brainwaves and convert that to natural language and human speech. And so just imagine, if we're able to give artificial communication ability to someone who can't communicate naturally, there's so much more we can do. It's practically limitless what we can do with AI, and I can't wait to see what new algorithms bring us even, even closer to our goal in 10 years' time. Send me back to the algorithmists. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. Great stuff.